welcome to the Strategic Families Podcast, where we challenge your family to be rooted in God's Word, energized with gospel-centered purpose, and activated on mission for His kingdom. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Strategic Families Podcast. Great to be back with you again. So the last two episodes, we encourage everyone, including our own family, to take a good look at where our families have been and are headed to reset our priorities and goals and to determine a plan to stay the course, all so that we can change our trajectory to be more in line with what God wants for our families. We hope that process has been as helpful to your family as it has been for ours. It's been a lot of work, and you know that if you've been going through this yourself. One of the items that came out of our evaluation was one of our kids helping more in chores. Just a quick example. So we had a couple of training sessions on sweeping the floor and doing dishes. So just basic, simple stuff. And yes, it took more time than if I had just done it myself. But once she gets these down, not only will it free up time for others in the family, it will also build her confidence and it'll give her the satisfaction of knowing that she is contributing to how the family operates. I love that. So rather than seeing that as me spending the time, I'd really like to think of it as an investment of time. And so I hope that you can think of it the same way when you spend time training your kids in something new. Think of it as an investment in the long run. If you haven't already, hop on our website, strategicfamilies.com, and you can download our free guide to walk you through this resetting process. It's called the Family Evaluation and Goal Setting Template, and it's featured right on the homepage, and you can also find it under Resources on our site, and you can download it for free. So for today and the next episode, we're sticking with the theme of resetting and realignment, and we've got a couple of tools that we think can be really helpful for your family. So these two episodes are going to be really practical, and we hope they'll prompt you to set up some systems for your family that have been helpful to us. These systems are really about bringing order and structure for some things that can easily get out of balance in our homes. All right, so I'm going to turn it over to Katie now. So Katie, since you're the one that stays home with our kids, I know you tend to feel the need for these systems more intensely than I do. So can you start us off by taking a step back and taking a look at why we need these kinds of systems to help us reset and regear? Yeah, we all know we should and need to train our kids to help them develop and grow, and we certainly feel the effects when we don't. Some of you may identify with this, and I think we've all been there at one point or another. We've finally done the much-needed planning and reconfiguring to get our families back on track, and we have so much intention and energy behind it, and we're sort of on this mountaintop. Whether you did the evaluating and goal setting with us or some other form, most of us go into the new year with lots of goals and intentions for ourselves and for our families. But then what happens? Real life happens. We start having days when kids are screaming, schedules are crazy, the house gets messy, and all those intentions just get buried under the reality of normal life. We get back into this whack-a-mole kind of life and can't even see straight. In those moments, it feels like our goal is just bedtime. I don't know if you've been there recently, but I know I have felt that a number of times over the years. As parents, we all hit these bumps in the road when we run out of ideas for how to train our children to do the next new thing, because let's be honest, there are just so many things. It's a little overwhelming. Often we're worn out and it's hard to come up with yet another creative way to teach something new. Taken to an even harder level, you're recognizing that there are both bad habits that need to be addressed and new skills that need to be taught. And they're all at different ages and maturity levels, and somehow we have to prioritize all of those things. And it's in these moments of feeling depleted that when a child disobeys or displays another bad habit, I find myself scrambling to pick a punishment to meet the immediate crime, and more often than not, I don't handle it very well if I didn't have a plan. Either I pick a punishment that far exceeds the crime because I've stacked up in my mind all of the violations from all of the kids and just react to this particular thing. Or I do nothing because I don't have the energy to follow through. Likely, some of you listening out there can identify with one of these feelings. Either extreme is unhelpful, both for that child and for the family as a whole. In all of this, there's a big truth we need to remember. We are all sinners, so we can expect our kids to require correction and training. That's why God gave them you to be their parents. We shouldn't be so surprised when they sin, although I'll admit in my less clear-thinking moments, I certainly do feel surprised. But even as we can expect it, the challenge is being ready to meet those needs with the proper response. 
Unfortunately, most violations do not occur in those moments when we're clear-headed, well-rested, and eager to share the good news of how Jesus came to forgive and save sinners. Wouldn't that be nice? But that's not how it normally works. It's when you're on the phone, or another child is crying, or you're trying to get dinner on the table, or you're right in the middle of a thought. And that's because not only are your kids sinners, we're sinners and prone to mess up our role to parent, discipline, and train them as well. We have lost focus as well, and now we have a bad combination. Another common challenge I encountered was having a way to remember what punishments were doled out for the violations that would occur, almost like clockwork, minutes before exiting the house. For example, just before we leave for school, I realize one child's room hasn't been cleaned, and another left their dirty socks on the floor again. So I'd throw out consequences on our way out the door, and we all pile off and go. We'd leave for the day, and by the time we came home, everyone, including me, would continue on with a fun afternoon, head to bed, and then it would occur to me that these children should have completed their consequences. But now it's too late, or I have to keep them up late. That combination, misconduct plus always feeling too depleted to make good choices in the moments that required training, eventually add up to an intolerable dynamic, and the whole family feels it. It was when I found myself in a state like this a few years ago that I decided to pull away for a couple of hours before summer break began and create what we now call the Clark Chip System and the complimentary consequence jar for our family. My goals for both of these systems were, one, to identify exactly what we needed to address and provide the training for. Two, to predetermine appropriate consequences and rewards so that I wasn't having to make the decisions in the moment. And third, this might be the most important to me, it was a system that did not require more of my time and energy in the day-to-day to to run it. I wanted something that put the responsibility right back on the child. Using these two systems have helped rebuild order and peace and increase the competence of our kids to contribute to the well-being of our family and home life. We like to think of this as using both the carrot and the stick. So for today's episode, we're going to start by focusing in on the carrot or the reward component, which we call the chip system, which is what we use to help them take responsibility for their own growth and maturity. It doesn't address poor behavior, but we'll dive into that next time when we get into the consequence jar. So the first step was to clearly outline the things we wanted the kids to each grow in and take responsibility for, offering incentives for certain amounts of chips earned. We basically established our own family currency And like the dollar, it has value because people believe it has value. And we've found that when kids are young, they're often more motivated by opportunities than they are by real money. Yeah, the chip system has been a lot of fun. So just think of it. For your family, you can create your own family currency. And you can have a lot of fun with this. And you can use some alliteration, whatever your last name is. You can find some currency in the world that you can use as a basis for the name of your own. It's a lot of fun. Okay, so... If you've set up goals recently, you're already tracking with that first step of identifying where growth and maturity may need to happen. Hopefully, this is some groundwork you've already laid. What we want to do is increase each child's productivity, responsibility, and industriousness. Let's remember, we're not just guiding children as they get older. We're raising adults. They won't be kids forever. We know that, but we have to remind ourselves of it. And our home is the most important place for them to learn these critical lessons about how to contribute and grow and challenge themselves, skills that are so important as adults. And as adults, we want them to be compassionate citizens, able to raise and provide for their own families, and most of all, be mature followers of Christ who can love and disciple their own children and those around them. This is a huge job. And like a marathon, it's a long, slow process, right? We need to break it down into bite-sized training chunks that can be done in a feasible but successful progression. So the chip system is one such bite-sized training chunk that you can use. With this in mind, let's talk about some of the key overlapping components of the chip system that help make it successful. First, it's critical to cultivate strong internal motivation within our children to willfully comply with diligently working on the new skill or character quality or good habit or even breaking a bad habit, whatever it is. Now, keep in mind that internal motivation in many cases is not going to start internally. We may need to step in and prime the pump, so to speak, so that an internal drive can develop over time. It just may have to start with an external motivator, like a reward or a blessing. And rewards and blessings can be really powerful incentives to begin this process. Think about your own work. Would you do it if you didn't get paid? Maybe. You might do some things without an incentive. 
but humans are designed to be motivated by rewards. And hopefully over time, you're not really thinking about the money. You're wanting to do a good job for the satisfaction of doing a good job, contributing to the team's success, and wanting to simply provide value. This dynamic can apply with kids as well. And the team, in this case, is your family. You can use this system, this CHIP system, to heighten their awareness of the benefits they receive from being in a family and remind them that to have those things, everyone needs to pitch in. Of course, using a reward to train a new habit, it's different from a general expectation once it's learned. Think about when your kid was potty training. You may have incentivized them with treats when they were potty training, but you're not still going to do that at age 10, right? Silly example, but the point is it's a skill that's been learned and now it's just expected and we can grow from there. We want our kids' contributions to the family to be the same way. Eventually, they should keep their rooms clean, not because they get a reward, but because they're part of a family and they're contributing and they want to provide that value. Hopefully in time, you can pull the system away and by God's grace, they will work diligently and everyone will reap the rewards that this offers to your family life. Both the chip system and the consequence jar are for the purpose of training, not a forever and always way of running your home. Once you're in a good rhythm, you can peel them back and enjoy a vibrant family life where everyone contributes. All right, that was a long point. Second, identify the things that will motivate them while they build the habit. So you want to pick things that they want to purchase. And when I say purchase, that's in quotes because they're not actually using real money. They're using your chips, right? Think of your kids' love languages. What really means a lot to them? For example, maybe they'd like a gift, but it might even be more important for them to spend one-on-one time with you. And Katie will get into some examples here in a little bit. Third, cast a vision for why your kids need to mature and take on new responsibilities. This may not be obvious to them. Help your children understand the difference between consuming and producing. So critical. Help them see that their consumption or production has a direct effect on the whole family, and in particular, their parents' energy level at the end of the day, right? If we all work well together, we can still have energy at the end of the day to enjoy and play together too. We tell our kids that if mom and dad are having to do the bulk of the work, the kids will need to go to bed early and miss out so that mom and dad can recover. In contrast, when the kids have pitched in throughout the day, we can still have the energy and enthusiasm to spend quality time together before bedtime. We need to help our kids make that critical connection between the work they do and how this blesses everyone in the long run, whether that's cleanliness, peace, order, or simply just fun as a family. Again, we want to raise our kids to be adults who understand that enjoying the benefits within their own families, workplaces, and communities are largely predicated on their own contributions. Really, really important point. Fourth, ensure that all incentives are earned. And that word earn is so, so important. The motivation should be designed to appeal, but they shouldn't be given too easily. Learning to work hard to earn something is vitally important in raising your children to be adults who understand that in almost every aspect of life, Privileges are earned. They're not just handed out. While the chip system is in use, make sure your kids don't just get treats and opportunities without being contributing, cooperative members of the family. So to provide a couple of examples of this, when using a system like this, they shouldn't be entitled to watching TV, eating desserts, playing with their friends, going on dates with you, and that kind of thing, unless they're actually paying for it, again, paying in quotes, with their contributions to the family. And we'll get into some detail about what that looks like. It's really important for us to help our kids make this connection so they can develop a proper work ethic. And this is how life works, right? If you work, you get paid. If you don't work, you don't get paid. And you can't buy the things you want. It's actually pretty simple when you think of it that way. And that feeling of disappointment they may feel if they don't have enough chips to enjoy a privilege, man, just let that be a great teacher for your kids. And you can be encouraging and everything but it's important to help them see the result of not having worked hard. That's a critical lesson in the life of a kid. You know, I love the simplicity of Paul's words in 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 10. It says, the one who is unwilling to work shall not eat. Obviously, we're going to feed our kids, but the principle of sowing and reaping is biblical and powerful. This is a fantastic lesson to learn at any age. Then, as the habits are built, you can pull the system out and let things ebb and flow more naturally. But in a period of heavy training, let the chips have a one-to-one correlation so kids can see why they need to work hard. I also love Proverbs 14.23. It says this, All hard work brings a profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. This chip system can be a really cool way to help train your kids in this reality. So hopefully that casts a little vision for our chip system and what it may mean for your family. 
I'm going to turn it over to Katie now to walk through some of the details of how you can set this up. Yeah, one other cool benefit to the having the one-to-one reality is pretty quickly the kids realize that if they want something, say they know they're going to want to watch a show that night or they're going to want to have dessert that night, quickly they're saying, oh, can I go do this workout? Can I learn this new chore? Can I, you know, they're looking for ways to contribute around the home. And I think that's just a really great thing for them to start planning ahead and looking and realizing I'm going to need money later for this. So I need to work now so that I am prepared for that, which I think is just a great thing. And, you know, our our family feels very strongly. We don't allow for like debts. They can't have something and then pay it back. We, they have to have it up front. So they have to work until they're ready to, to do it. So with the Clark chips, we, we actually use poker chips. That's just what I found when I went to the store looking for something that could be a currency. I like that there's different colors. So we can have some be one and two and five and 10 and all of that. The chips have become our family currency, which means that they're used to purchase whatever is most important to our children. And Graham talked about how you want to think about what is a privilege or a treat or an opportunity for your child. Maybe that's time alone with you. I know with us, with four kids, our kids are really excited about the time to just be one-on-one with us or even one-on-two with us. That's not something that happens very easily. Another thing that you can do is if your child is old enough to really value money or there's something in particular that they're wanting to buy, you can make your chips, you know, one of the purchases could be for 20 chips, you get $5. So you can translate this to money for those that would be interested that in that in your family. And by the way, if you do allowances, that's fine. We would just strongly, strongly encourage you to tie it in with age-appropriate contributions to your family. Don't make it just a set amount of money with no expectation of work. So here are a few steps I'd recommend to implement your family's chip system. First, take time to brainstorm the skills you want them to develop and the ways you want to see them contribute better to your family life and home environment than is currently happening. This may include goals you just set when evaluating your family life or that your kids came up with. Remember, all of your kids are likely capable of more than we are asking of them. I think this is a major and unfortunate misconception in our current culture. We sometimes think we're doing kids a favor by only having them play, but this is really not in their best interest. Remember, we are raising future adults, not large children. Growth and responsibility are critical to not only their success later in life, but also their happiness and fulfillment. When they accomplish things, they will feel far more content than when they're just handed them. So again, this list should not be busy work, but things that actually provide value in your home. We also have things that they can do to develop qualities, like maybe it's helping them do their devotions every day, or maybe it's working out more, or maybe it's they're working to memorize more or watch a younger child or things like that. There are lots of different things that you could incorporate. So now prioritize that list of contributions that they can make, picking only a couple of things probably per child to work on at a time. You can move down this list as they build the habits, but you want to set them up for success and not overwhelm them. You can have choices if you don't have something in particular you're trying to train and just let them start working at different things and show them a a list of good habits to be building. But if there are a couple things you really need to see change, prioritize those and just pick a couple so they can focus. Then the next step would be to generate a purchase list of what can be done with the chips once they've earned them. Again, think about what your child would be willing to work for. Maybe it's a dessert, a certain amount of screen time, or a TV show, a chance to do something special with one of the parents, like go for a bike ride or out on a date. Uh, Maybe it's a special excursion that they've been wanting to do, or getting to pick a dinner menu, or having a friend come play or sleep over. And don't just guess at these. Go ahead and ask them. It's good to have them weigh in on this. What do they really want? This will give them a sense of ownership in the development of the chip system. Each child will likely have slightly different things on their list, but the cool thing is you can also have group gifts on here. For instance, you could put a high chip value on everyone going to the movie theater together, where each kid would contribute to the larger purchase. Okay, so then the next thing is to set the budget. Determine how many chips are earned for each thing that they're working on and how much the purchases will each cost. Make these attainable, yet challenging. For example, in ours, we have that learning a new chore and doing it well consistently five times earns you 10 chips. But you can also purchase staying up late 30 minutes with mom and dad or going on a bike ride with just mom or dad for 10 chips each and so on. 
Okay, then the next thing is to set the system up in an easy to access place in your home. This is really critical so that the system runs itself. The kids need to have access to it so that you're not having to be the one to go and make all these exchanges all day. We have ours in our kitchen. You'll need the chips that we talked about. Again, we use poker chips. You could use whatever you're comfortable with. And then we have that as our main bank. And then each kid has their own little individual bank with their name on it. We just got little boxes from the dollar store, but you could use mason jars or whatever, some kind of a smaller container. Then lastly, you'll need either a bulletin board or just somewhere where you can post the printouts of your expectations and the earning values and then the purchasing options so that the kids can go and look. And our kids love getting to study this and see how they could earn this and this and this so they can have this and this and this. And um, you want this to be something that they're really eager and excited to do. If your kids are younger, you may even consider putting some pictures on there or things so that might make it a little bit easier for them to figure it out. The kids will be eager to be paid, so they'll come to you seeking approval of accomplishment, and you can simply tell them that, yes, they can go and retrieve their pay. So they'll you know, come and say, hey, I did this workout for 20 minutes, or hey, I finished this chore, can you check it so I can be paid, or that kind of thing. You don't have to monitor this once it gets going, and that's one of the things I really, really love about this. But you do want to make sure to charge them when they ask for a privilege. So if they're wanting a piece of candy, if they want dessert, or they want to watch a show, just make sure that you say, do you have enough chips? Can you pay for that? Okay, go pay for that. And then you can have that. And, you know, that way they start to see more of that one-to-one. Okay, so the very last step after you've done all of this is to call the family meeting. This is a really critical step. You and your spouse need to be in line with one another. And then you want to clearly outline for the kids, what are the problems that you're seeing or the things that you're really wanting to see them step up in and be very clear about what success looks like. Most kids really want to succeed. And so if you tell them exactly what it looks like, they will almost always rise to the occasion. So share the opportunities of what it is that they can earn and how they would earn that. And then be sure to help them see the differences between consuming and producing, just like Graham was talking about earlier, at age-appropriate levels. For a starter brainstorm list to help you get thinking about what to work on or chores your kids could learn or what purchasing options can be on your list, check out Your Family Currency. It's a document that's under the Resources tab on our website, and it's a free template. But we set this up years ago, and it's, you can kind of just take it the way it is, maybe keep some of them, maybe change some of them, but it might at least inspire some thinking for you and have a format that you can work from. As Graham said, you can use this system for initial training, and if it's done well, it will instill that internal motivation needed. The kids will rise to the occasion, they'll become helpful and responsible and mature, and before you know it, those things become habits. And then everybody is doing this just because. And you stop doing everything as such a one-to-one. You stop charging quite so often, too, because everybody's contributing. If everyone's stepping up, then you just all enjoy those things as a family, and slowly you just kind of pull out the system, and it, it dissolves, essentially. Again, this isn't meant to be forever. You might also have a saver who just never wants to spend his or her chips. But hopefully by that point, the habit has been formed and they've felt that sense of earning. If enthusiasm does fade, though, just periodically bring it back to the forefront again. We've brought the system back out a few times when we find ourselves in that same chaotic state again, and it's going to keep happening. But it has proved to be so helpful in getting us back on track quickly. The good news is when we bring it out the next time, they already know the drill, they're already excited to start earning again, and we get on track much more quickly each time we do it. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, so again, in case those steps came too fast for you to soak in verbally, we know that was a lot. That list is also on our website under the resources tab where you can find that template. So be sure to check that out at strategicfamilies.com. Using the CHIP system has helped rebuild order, peace, and increase the competence of our kids to contribute to the well-being of our family and home life. Remember, our homes are the first training ground they have to be the adults we described earlier, so it's important to see successful community living with our so it's important to see successful community living within our homes. We've been so thankful for the changes it has encouraged, and generally speaking, we find our kids are far more excited to earn their way to change than to pay consequences for a lack thereof. Each kid is different. We all know that. We have to recognize that. So we would encourage you, study your child to understand what motivates him or her. Some kids really need consequences. Others really just need to know what success looks like, and they'll want to hit that bar once it's been laid out. And other kids love to earn something, and they'll light up at the opportunity to do so. 
Remember that we all enjoy that sense of accomplishment and our kids are no different. They may enjoy being entertained in the moment, but if you want to see your kids really stand up tall and confident in the long run, give them opportunities to be challenged, to work hard, to earn something. About a year ago, I was in a training session and the trainer said this, and I love it. I've never forgotten it. Confidence comes from competence. I'm going to say that again. Confidence comes from competence. I love that. Confidence does not come when we just tell our kids to be confident or if we try to boost their, quote, self-esteem. If we want our kids to be confident, to be actually confident, they need to be competent. So let's give them lots of opportunities to step into it with meaningful work. And meanwhile, your whole family will be working well together, sharing the load, and enjoying the fruit of peaceful relationships, healthy habits, and a joyful home. Well, that'll do it for today. We hope there have been some tips in this episode that help you and your spouse create an incentive system that works and that your whole family can have fun with. Make it your own. Give it a fun name. What a cool opportunity this might be for you to start your own family currency. Next time, we're going to address the stick part of the carrot in the stick, the consequence jar. The consequence jar is a way for us to address attitudes and behaviors that can derail our best efforts to train our kids. Check us out on strategicfamilies.com. And if this show has been a blessing to you, we'd love it if you would share this episode with others and to have your review on Apple Podcasts. It'll help other people find the show. So we would really appreciate that. Thanks so much for listening and we'll see you next time.